Can we try and synchronize the clap? One, yes. two, three. That nice. was pretty good, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first episode of Retrograde. I'm joined here by my esteemed guests, Mr. James Kane. Hello. And Mr. Dan Newham. Esteemed is a little much, isn't it? Do you it? think? Maybe. We'll see, Saucy I guess. boys. Saucy boys. Okay, that's more like By it. By saucy boys. <laughs> <laughs> James Kane. <laughs> we are the saucy boys now. Everybody knows why we're here. Sex appeal. <laughs> These truly are dark, desperate times. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're here to talk some past times about PlayStation 1. The best days, really, weren't they? Yeah, probably. In many ways. The mid '90s were the best days. Yeah, you know, it's in the past, so therefore it things was better were than now. things were simpler. Uh, they were then. simpler back then. Although, yeah. in many ways, they were actually considerably more difficult. You needed so many things to play games, didn't you? You yeah, needed you a, an needed actual it. physical memory. A scat card. lead, you know, a controller. Yeah. It was fine. Oh, TVs. Were so I mean, it, these days though, it's like you know, I need to get to a place. How can I get to a place? Oh, I'll take this little thing out of my pocket and type in six digits, and that's how they had to get there. Whereas back in the mid nineties, there was none of that. No, there wasn't. But you know what? There was less complication. We yes. didn't know any better, did we? No, no, you know, exactly. I mean, days. I mean, you were in your late twenties in the mid nineties. <laughs> um, well, you know, they kind of like completely changed the industry. That was like a pivot. I mean, who were the major point. players at this point? Obviously, Sega and Nintendo. Was there anyone else involved? I mean, well, Commodore. Were. No, Commodore yeah, Atari pretty much was finished by that. Point. Yeah, like there was that whole thing with Atari in the eighties where they went bust and got rid of all their games in, in New Mexico, and that's where the Japanese came in with Nintendo, and they kind of filled that market. So there was just no kind of um, gaming related companies in the US at that point. <clears throat> mm. So Nintendo very much invaded, Sega came along not long after that. I had a Mega Drive, but you're either a Sega kid or a Nintendo kid, weren't you? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Do you remember there was that point with the SNES yeah. and the Mega Drive and they weren't really moving to the next generation. The whole idea was to keep having all these bolt-ons yeah. added on to- Yeah, 32X on the Mega yeah, Drive. there's this, I guess this arms race <laughs> to move <laughs> into CD-ROMs. PCs were becoming a thing at the time, weren't they? And um, bringing Sony in to work on this SNES CD, which the PlayStation, as it was called, mm. um, that's, that was where they were going. This thing popped up a few years ago. The prototypes they made, someone bought it at auction for $75. Well, they wow. just bought a bo box of junk from this company yeah. that, had, that had gone bust. And inside it was the Nintendo PlayStation. And the crazy thing about it, you plug it in, the thing works. <laughs> there was there so was the yeah, on it? there was demo games on it. Oh god damn, that's yeah, amazing! Really, really weird. And it had the the SNES port and the CD ROM on it. So yeah, an amazing piece of history. Makes you think this whole thing. If they they had gone in with either Sega or Nintendo, and that had gone off the ground, and it had become the success that it obviously would have been, how different the the architecture of the the, the entire industry would be now. Absolutely. I mean, God knows who'd have survived, who'd have fell. Would Nintendo have even, uh, Microsoft have even joined the race at that point? You never know. Who's to say? Because, yeah. I mean, if it was just, if they partnered with either one of them, um, who knows what would have happened. It could have failed. Sony could have gone, oh, this isn't working and just given up. Yeah. We'd never have got the PS2, 3, 4. But at the time, we're, we're talking early 90s here, so the Polygon stuff wasn't really there. After that deal fell through and Nintendo did their Game of Thrones bit on stage in, yeah. in Chicago or wherever it was and revealed their partnership with Philips instead. That was a different bit. That was 1991. Mm -hmm. So 2D was still very much the hot topic, wasn't it? And the semi-3D graphics that you would have got on, on your SNES. Yeah, um, like not the, quite I mean, I was like six drive. years old at this point. You know? Yeah, yes. like the, the Hercules game. Yeah. Where, where you were running through different dimensions, but it was still 2D. Yeah, and so, so, so yeah. Sony very much went back to the drawing board when they decided to make this their own thing, didn't they? Mm. Um, and, and then that was when they made a decision to go completely 3D. So I don't even know if that would have happened if it had stayed as a, an S NES peripheral mm. or whatever it would have been. I mean, I'm just curious as to how much turning it from PlayStation to PlayStation was was actually an important part. Like, was that a thing? Oh, well, <laughs> you, you can do it now. That's, Here's the loophole. That, that's, that, that's a totally different name, fellas. Do you remember any of the early marketing for PlayStation? I've heard it. Oh, I don't remember it. Don't, I've just I caught up with it, it since. I, I'd say I was a touch young. Sony always had, and still does, has weird marketing. They've yeah, got a bit more conventional. They have, the yeah, years, in recent know. times, but especially PS1 and PS2, like Welcome to the Third Place for PS2, it mm. was all very much just kind of abstract marketing, yeah. and it was really cool. It was the... Scottish lady, young Scottish lady with the um, like alien-shaped head, they did some special effects, and it was just kind of like 
footage of her talking. Of course, this was back in yeah. the, back, back in the days where people say, "I wonder if that's real or not." You know, like like people would yeah. say that about the Blair Witch Project. It's clearly not the best advert of the nineties. The best advert of the nineties with that was the Reebok one. Belly's gonna get you, which, which was a giant <laughs> oh, belly Jesus chasing after guy. That was a great advert. This is that a big a fun, nostalgia trip for me yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> Fantastic yeah. advert. My first memory of it was my cousin came up for Christmas and he got a PlayStation and the first thing I ever saw was was Tekken on it and it absolutely blew my mind. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's the first time I'd ever seen like 3D games yeah. and it was just absolutely insane. Going from like a Mega Drive and you're playing, you know, Sonic and Golden Axe and Streets of Rage and then just seeing 3D blocks, you know, fighting each other on screen. Even Tekken wasn't really 3D, was it? It was two and a half. No, it's obviously. definitely 3D. Yeah, sure. yeah. You can move around but it wasn't really it was definitely 3d that, that, that i mean 3D, the polygons yeah. maybe that big but yeah it was definitely yeah. 3d the, the best tekken character was i don't know which one it was in or if it was in all of them the uh boxing kangaroo oh roger roger yeah yeah, yeah. obviously roger hey hatchy he was kind of like a one of the unofficial mascots for playstation wasn't he yeah yeah back yeah, when yeah, they were so. still searching for one I yeah guess. well yeah. they had the few they had you know they had crash and they had hey hatchy lara croft by the end of that gen they had solid snake and they did have lara croft even though that wasn't really Entirely a PlayStation thing. To me, Crash has always been the, the mascot for PlayStation. For me, it's been Tomb Raider. I mean, he's persisted, world. even though he's gone best part of three generations without a game. I and the marketing, marketing, I think it was one of those consoles that it kind of sold by word of mouth as well, though. I mean, I bought it because four or five other kids in my class had PlayStation. Yeah. And they were talking about how good it was. And obviously, it's, when you're a kid, you want what everyone else has got. Yeah. Mm. And that's just how it went. I know two or three got it because I went and got it. You know, and it was just yeah. one of them that, like the Wii sold without it would probably sell without any adverts at all i don't know if i got one in 96 or possibly 97 i was about then too yeah and i got a chipped playstation ah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna you were chipped up. from yeah, the get-go yeah, from the get-go, yeah well, i had mine for a couple of years before i chipped them. are we beyond the statutes of limitations for <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure I mean, I mean, I everyone had a chipped playstation no no they didn't yeah. i never got mine chipped Did because, you know? because i, because I could the afford them all <laughs> rich boy over here <laughs> no i was one of these people who actually believed that the police would come after me for that oh, really? yeah. and, I was like, and I could have had it as well there, there was a guy who did it but you know I, I heard all the stories that I oh, bricks your PlayStation you know and mm. I was like I can't afford to buy another PlayStation you know who you know? probably put those stories out there Sony, Sony. Oh, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure yeah. I was too young to oh, yeah, 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 yeah. by this point I'm like 10 11 years old at this point but yeah all my friends ones and I go around to, and it'd be good and the games will cost them like two quid but they barely work, you know. You'd have to turn it on and off. There were some of them where they were like, all right, you could, you don't have to get it chipped, but what you do, you get the real game and you get the chipped game and you you open, you put a pencil into the lid. So yeah, it looks yeah. Like there was like I, hacks, there was like sort of I did that hacks. Too, yeah. It stops during the loading process and you swap them in and out and in and then you're fine. But presumably you'd have to have the original game to do that yeah, all the time anyway. Yeah. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having Who the remembers uh, the great um, tactic that Konami took against chipped playstations okay. there's um there's a bit in the original metal gear solid where uh colonel camel's like oh you gotta call meryl man um oh, i don't have a number <laughs> oh, oh yes, it's yeah. it's on the back of the box and that shouldn't <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem should it you having access to the box yeah you can't complete the rest of the game unless you i mean yeah you can probably the, get it from and you somewhere didn't else. have google yeah yeah, yeah there yeah, wasn't yeah, like yeah, google yeah, image yeah. oh there it is there yeah there was impossible. you wouldn't happen to have a chip playstation would you say? Was yeah. that? well i had a chip copy of metal gear solid oh, 1.85 i want to say i had a chip copy of that game so i don't know how i acquired the the number i think my brother may you have sourced that, that game, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, i just didn't get past that point what do you guys think of the hardware the console itself you know the 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 grey plastic, this is the, the it original very one. attractive, was it, really? Oh, see, I, in terms of ergonomics and all that, I know yeah. nothing about design. You can see anything, the DNA of the SNES on it, right? The, the yeah, grey yeah. and the, the colour the color scheme? You absolutely can. Now, I say that I like it now, however, I do remember coveting, I don't think I ever actually got one, but I do remember coveting, you know, the stickers that you could have oh, on yeah, them yeah, to yeah, jazz yeah. up your PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Because you couldn't exactly um, get face plates for it, could it? It was, it was just stickers. It was, yeah, it was yeah, plastic yeah. stickers. Um, it's so garish. You look back at them now and you're like, why did why I Why did it do that? that? Yeah. yeah. You see all these, like, yeah. uh, these PlayStations at car boots now, they're just, like, covered in, in like, sticker marks, you know, where mm. people have And they're all kind of got that um, yellowy tint to them as well, haven't they? One thing that I really loved about the PlayStation was, um, when you'd uh, turn it off and you'd open the thing and just watching the disc spin. Yeah. It's, just, it's just an exciting little thing. It's like, Someone told me that was bad for the PlayStation yeah, opening the disc. And I'm like, 
it, it can't be. Did There's you use it as a CD player? Yes. <laughs> no. I, yeah, because Little Lord Fauntleroy here had a CD player in every room. Um, <laughs> I, I I remember hanging out at my cousin's house, just hanging out in a bedroom, just playing CDs and hanging out. But it's like, oh my god, this thing it can play games. But hey, look at this, it's a CD in there. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Like that was like a lot of people's first CD player. Which is quite weird, like when you compare it to the PS2, which is also a lot of people's first DVD, DVD player. player. And I quite, hmm. I quite like that, um, that yeah. correlation between God, them. God, we were so easy to please. I know, yeah, it's like <laughs> DVDs <laughs> we were on my idiots. console. <laughs> It's that noise at the start. Yeah. I won't try and replicate it. Well, I've I'll got do a bad by job. the uh, the theme I've got. Why I did have on my PlayStation was the 20th anniversary yeah, yeah, yeah. one, and it played. I the currently start have that. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Um, I remember there was a birthday party of yours, and I bought you a Super Soaker. Yeah, and yeah. I kept the cool. free kept the free disposable camera that came with it because I'm not that good a friend. Uh, Twenty four years old. Uh, you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I remember that this this was in um, your old house in Wales where we grew up, and we were all up in your bedroom. It was me, you, your older brother Lee, and like a few other peeps. And I remember my mum turned up and I had to go, but I was having so much fun playing Resident Evil Two. I cried. Did you? I, I cried, man. Wow. I, 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 I was a real brat about it. Wow. Uh, yeah, and I will have been about nine, maybe? Whenever that whenever Resident Evil 2 came out, nine or ten? You'd have been older than that, surely. I was. Had you not seen Resident Evil 2 at that point? No, it was the first time I ever saw it. And so therefore I was like, no, are you, are you kidding? This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I think we're kind of lucky. We, we were a little too young for Res 1. Please don't judge me. Yeah, yeah. Because you, Res what, 1 kind of sucked. What do you guys think about this revelation of JC being brought to tears by Resident Evil 2? No, being brought to tears by having to leave Resident Evil 2. I didn't want to go. It, it the... doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Knowing what you know really about anyway. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has a game ever brought, brought you guys to tears? Closest PlayStation games that have brought me to tears is when a save file corrupted. Oh, oh God right. damn. I was <laughs> okay. about to talk about this. Uh, the worst was I was on disc three of Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> that is a singular, oh, no. a singular save file. Oh, that is bad. To the point damn. where and it, it almost ruined the end of the game for me because I was like, I cannot go through all of this again. I no. put so many hours into this. So, but fortunately, I was playing it semi simultaneously with my, my friend at school. So I just said, look, I'm going to have to copy your file here. and. We got yeah. to the same point, but they weren't my characters. They weren't I, entirely different material and everything. Yeah. It kind of ruined the end of the game for me. There was one major design flaw with these memory cards, and that was if you're in a game, you play it for three hours, you go to save it, find out your memory card's full, you cannot go and delete anything. No. From you have to do that from the main menu. You basically just have to go, well, these three hours were wasted, yeah. Yeah. and then go and delete something. Or take it keep leaving to the playstation on yeah, yeah. taking the memory card to another playstation um, who had uh, multiple memory cards labeled with the game stuff that was on it like i used to i just had one two that was it yeah. oh no see I, I i used to play the original metal gear solid flipping religiously and mm. um, to the point where i'd have multiple saves and because of course it was back then there was no level selector or anything so i was like well i gotta have that save for if i want to do the psycho Mantis boss fight see i don't think it, uh, we had that i think i eventually uh, meet me and my brothers had our own memory cards. So mm. when we went to the PlayStation, we'd have our own saves, but I may be wrong on that. Mm. Let's talk about the biggest revelation uh, during the PSX era, before PS1, DualShock. Oh, oh God damn. What a change, oh. game changer that was, no well, pun intended. The controller itself has changed so much as well. You don't think it is, because it's only very modular changes over the years, but you compare the very first DualShock that came out. Yeah. And it survived two generation cycles. Was the twin stick also as standard dual shock? Yes, that was a that came in within the dual shock. Right, yeah, because yeah. I, I remember the, the first game I had the twin stick, so it will have also been dual shock. The key was, features were it vibrated and it had the twin yeah, sticks, yeah. yeah. Um, it was uh, the original Medal of Honor. I was like, this is, gr oh, actually, no, first of all, this is weird. And then within hours of playing, I remember I was playing in the living room. Uh, my dad was watching me play Medal of Honor. Before long, it's was like, well, this is the only way I can play now. And this was the mid 90s, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Me and my brothers got dual shocks for Christmas. And the first game, I think one of the first games that had the capabilities of using it was Tekken 3. Mm. So it picked up quite quick. It's quite easy to use on a, on a fighter like that. Um, but I think I was more impressed with it vibrated when yeah, something yeah. happened on the screen. <laughs> you, know? you never realized just that the dual analog sticks 
have changed the game forever. Yeah, you know, as absolutely. D pads are the thing of the past as soon as that came into play. Of course, what would the PS One be without its lineup of games? Who played Unholy War? Either of you guys. That doesn't even sound like a game. To this me. is what was so great about the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2. It kind of, uh, well, maybe it's just because my life was different and therefore it didn't have the same effect as the PlayStation 3. It's just all those hidden gems. Unholy War, Look, thinking back, what I remember, it, it wasn't even anything special. Basically, you had a, um, it was 3D, but you had like a square grid. It was like a down, uh, top down thing. And you'd pick a character and then it was basically just these two characters like alien kind of things just trying to kill each other with ballistics and it was a lot of fun I sunk a lot of hours into it and I've never met another person who played Unholy War I loved that game yeah I mean, I don't, you know I don't think that game actually exists probably not maybe it's a fever it sounds dream. like an IOS game really. yeah. <laughs> and yeah yeah of course who can forget the hours that we as young lads uh, sank into running around each other Flailing knives trying to slit the other person's throat in the Siphon Filter 2 multiplayer. Ah, of course, oh, yeah, God, Siphon that. Filter 2. You know, that, that's probably impossible to play that game now, but it was hard at the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we, we've been programmed out of playing games like that, haven't we? We're we coddled these days. I don't think we are. I think just the way games are done now is different. Sif Siphon Filter, though, was like great for the time. The mo that, that was like the first kind of taste of multiplayer. I can remember another multiplayer game we used to play was uh, Medal of Honor Underground. Um, yeah, which I was great. When you played as the French. Yeah, and um, you had the rocket French launches. Resistance it, was, fighter. it was fantastic. The Panzanaka. But then, like, you, I, don't, I don't think we ever had a multi tap, so it was only ever two player on the split screen for that. Yeah. Multi tap. Jesus, yeah. yeah. Couch co op, though, man. Ah. Yeah, it was the way, wasn't it? Um, I can remember Gran Turismo. Uh, mm. Was and Ridge Racer were both um, multiplayer games. Never played I, played. Ridge, I played the arcade version of Ridge Racer, so the arcade machine. But yeah, Gran Turismo yeah. was the first driver, and yeah. I was no good at it. I, I, nowadays, I'm, I, I buy the odd one. I'm, I'm alright. Yeah. But at, at the time, like, how much did Gran Turismo just like blow your like, mind? Yeah, it was like those graphics are insane, and, and now you look at them, it's just like wow. What was the one on PS2? Gran Turismo 3 GX or something like Free TS or? Oh, well, Gran Turismo 3, uh, it was originally. Yeah, something else with two letters after. Oh, anyway, okay. um, but I remember playing that and looking at it and going, I don't know how graphics can get better than this. <laughs> no, no. You know? Yeah. Because they're yeah. always, you know, every console launches with a driving game because that's the easiest one to get looking good, you know? Mm. And they always do look at every new console. It's like, it's almost photorealistic. How can it improve on this? And then you go back to it after a generation away and you're like, I actually looked pretty crap, yeah, to be yeah. honest. But it, I remember, it yeah, Gran Turismo, that was the one. Yeah, there was, there was a couple on PlayStation, the GT2 came as well. Speaking of driving games, do you remember Driver? Yeah, yeah. That was God, yeah. Now, was it the first Driver or the second one that was set in the 70s? I think that was Driver 2. Yeah, I want to say it's number two. And I remember for a good period of time trying to run people over, even though the game it. said, yeah. you can't no. run players over. And I was like, Don't we'll tell me see what about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of masochistic. Just going around trying to destroy people that I know well, I can't do. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto was on the PlayStation one. Yeah, well, that was the thing. Driver followed yes. GTA, didn't it? Pro mm. Probably followed GTA 2 in London. Possibly, I guess, yeah, didn't yeah. It? I think if we're, we're talking about PS1 games, though, I mean, it, it's a massively, I was saying earlier, it's a very easy console to romanticize and nostalgia, go crazy over it. And Final Fantasy is, is the one for me. I, I think PS1, I think that. Even before Metal Gear Solid. In, Final Fantasy VII was an unbelievable experience. Here we Eight go. Eight was unbelievable. Nine was. Yeah, I think you're still playing that to this day. I have never finished nine, but I'm I'm, oh, disc, right. I'm on disc four right now. It's just like there's just something about the style in the game, and I've, I recently bought fifteen. I was just it doesn't have any of that. There's some magic that PS One trilogy. There's some magic to that. Um, I think like the first time I saw Final Fantasy VII, and I, I've said I've talked about this before, and it was just like when I saw that game, I didn't play it myself, I watched my older brother play it, and it was just like, that was a revelation in the way I kind of perceived what a game could be like. Because yeah. I didn't realize it could be this big epic story, yeah. and you get to go along for the ride with that, and it's I've, hundreds of hours long, you yeah. know? It's, I, it's I think insane. you're right in that it was probably the first game for me that I ever played that wasn't really just a throwaway game. No, yeah, it wasn't trying to get the high score, games, you know, or, yeah. you know, the, it was a story. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, looking back, Final Fantasy VII's story kind of sucks. You know, in reality, it's a bit. Different. You got to get the dolphin over the ridge with your yeah. whistle. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just. That was in there. It yeah, was in there. Uh, you you got to do the parade. The parade. I love the parade bit. <laughs> trying to do. That. And, and those things like I really strongly dislike Final Fantasy as a series. I think it is just bad. But 
even I had fun with Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, oh, I just, I don't, I, I love just the the, the I mean, outstanding villain in there. Um, that moment Sephiroth? where Sephiroth, yeah, where Sephiroth, Sephiroth kills Ares was just like, whoa, this is insane! Like that was the one with yeah. Sid in, wasn't it? Sid, you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happened so early that killing Ares, yeah, you know that that was very well hidden. And you did all that leveling up on her, you yeah. Know? <laughs> but I remember when Eight came out. That that was a I think that I, if it happened today, it'd be an entirely different. Where I finished Seven just before Eight came out, mm. and I knew it was coming out, and I I walked down. It must have been the summer holidays or something because I seem to have every day free. And I walked the 15 minutes into Eastwood, where I used to live, to the Woolworths there. <laughs> Time. Mm. Um, yeah. And to see if they had it. And I must have done that constantly for two weeks until it was actually out. Until it was there, And every yeah. day I was getting disappointed. And then this last day I was like, oh, this is the last day I'm going to try it for ages. And there it was on the show. Yeah. And I bought it. I took it home. And my mum, for the first time in my entire life, knowing I'd been waiting so long to get this, just left me at home on my own for the first time. And I didn't move for the entire time. That was the first Dan day. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it, it was. You know, it was yeah. And I didn't leave the house, and that, that is probably my favourite Final Fantasy. It, it was amazing, wasn't it? I think like I was blown away by the cutscenes. This. The, the FMV sequences, of course, yeah. that was a new thing yes. on PlayStation. Yeah. I was blown away by them in Final Fantasy VII. And when, so when 8 rolled along and it was like realistic looking in humans and it, it was just like, wow, this painted is... Painted backgrounds, yeah. well, which still look great to this day. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing about painted backgrounds. They really hold up. And then 9 is such a charming game, isn't it? So different. Probably my least favourite of the three. Yeah, the art style is fantastic. It may, it may be my favourite. The, 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 the little dude with the, the hat and the eyes. Yeah, Vivi. Yeah, the... Yeah. The Wookiee, not Wookiee. The Wookiee. No, what, what, do you, what do you call this? Uh, the Jawas? Is it the Jawas? Oh, like a Jawa, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mage, aren't they? They're black mages <coughs> in Final Fantasy. Yeah. Black mages. No, I was, yeah. 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 I mean, it was great for JRPGs all around, though, wasn't it? The PlayStation. Yeah. It was a huge wave of JRPGs Chrono Trigger as well. coming yeah. over, yeah. Uh, yeah, Chrono Trigger, uh, Wild Arms, uh, Grandia was another one. It, fellas, I mean, like, not, it's not an RPG, but you know, it's all about just one big Japanese like title, like, incredibly Japanese game. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Yeah. I figured we'd get to this one eventually. Oh. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid was amazing, wasn't it? It was yeah. just absolutely amazing. It was awesome. The It's the coolest game I've ever played. I mean, yeah. MGS one yeah. was I invested so much of my childhood into this story. What were your favourite favourite parts of Metal Gear Solid though? Um, having to change the controller yep. with Psycho Mantis. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was just so deluxe because I mean it was it's all about nudging the fourth wall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the back of the box thing we've already talked back about. Back of the yeah. box. That was so um, meta. That was starting amazing. the game with the beautiful. I mean, because th this is the first game which even when, even though I was a kid got me in the emotions. So like Sniper Wolf dying. Spoilers. Oh god. Um, <laughs> or uh, there's a statute yeah. of limitations on spoilers. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, but like you, the, playing the game for the first time and like. Jogging onto because I mean he he jogs doesn't he like that and going into the snow and like the guys just like oh whose footprints are these and you're yeah. like oh, no <laughs> like, this game's so deep yeah. Yeah. nowadays you're like oh for God's sake of course yeah. <laughs> I just love that um, like you know from every now and then just lighting the cigarette and your health would gradually deplete yeah. wouldn't yeah, it yeah. You know? so it's, it's, it's never, a, there's never a point actually having that cigarette at all apart yeah. from just for that mechanic yeah. and how how cool was Foxhound yes yeah. they were awesome the story they? we talk about Final Fantasy stories sucking. Metal Gear story is awesome. Yeah, particularly right. the first one. It is a great. great it's story. it's that yeah. perfect mix of like because I mean like this definitely got me into politics a little bit. Um, yeah, because it's so vehemently oh, anti hmm. yeah and. And anti nuclear weapons. It might mm. be Metal Gear Solid may be partly responsible for me being such an absolute. Left wing. Left wing. Such a red. Um, but it's it's like yeah it's it's like you you mix like this because of, you know the Japanese got nuked like twice so so you mix you mix that with Japanime and horny melodrama uh, with the the level of voice acting often of we've got to get to the train station which which is my anime impression but I mean it often counted for this and the characters. It was just amazing. Liquid you Snake know, was such a cool villain, like, well, wasn't he? Brother! <laughs> you can't remake it these days because oh, the whole point is, is that you see both Solid and Liquid in the first scene, and yet when you play it on the PlayStation, they, they're they unable to convey that these guys are identical twins, um, oh, as in their clones. Yeah, so true. therefore, if you were to remake Metal Gear Solid today, like, the, the, it, it, it wouldn't be a twist. Like, no. you're just like, oh, that guy is that guy. And, you and could like, do... 
Those those two are specifically <laughs> twins, though, aren't they? They, they are les enfants terribles. They came together where Solidus was separate. From yeah, 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 yeah. And the, the one who went on to become the president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boss fights in Metal Gear Solid were just amazing as well. Divine. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I've always said, no. Nah. There's always something a little, little bit different to him. I love the cyborg yeah. ninja fight. The cyborg ninja fight is absolutely great. Uh, Sniper Wolf was... Yeah, that was good. Most of, ah, you can use the cigarettes if you somehow manage to miss the infrared goggles. You can use the cigarettes, the, the uh, lasers, to get past the lasers. Oh, shit, that's yeah. so clever so that, for that age. So that you're not gassed to death. But I, fortunately... I've never played that boss fight properly. Mm. I, mean, I don't know about you guys. The, the uh, Sniper Wolf one. I never did it properly. I always just oh, did the right. Nikita around the edge and uh, no, yeah, hit her I in the back. Probably. You know, Bit where the, it's it's going upwards. Bam! Was yeah. it what well, right right in the gut? Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's it's high. I mean, it's melodrama, but it's high emotion. Melodrama. And then obviously, obviously at the end, like Snake takes out Sniper Wolf, and then you just realise she's not bad. She's just doing a job. Final fight after you've after you fought Rex and it's just the fist fight with liquid on top ah, of yeah. on top of Rex. That was visceral, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. When, when I mean to add to the male drama, I am I remembering right or is it just a fantasy that they were just a couple of topless hunks? Yeah, they were that a couple point, of yeah. topless. Oh, that was, hunks. It was the same yeah. at the end of Punch Metal Station. Metal Gear 3, was it? Did you guys enjoy cardboard boxes? Yes. <laughs> Never really used them. Did you not? I love Every them. time I used them, I got found very quickly. I want to get in there like when someone's walking into yeah. the, the little section that you're in and there's just a load of boxes everywhere. You just you hide yourself in the one oh, box. It's, it's a box. <laughs> um, do you know the other practical point that those boxes served in that game? I put them on the back of a lorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, put yeah. them on the back of a lorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God damn, um, that game was so ahead of so, its time. Wasn't I mean, it, you know? like, and it was so satisfying to die in Metal Gear Solid as well because you, you get that, you get that. And so, and unless then, it was like the ninth time in a row you'd done it, and be like, yeah. stop crying. And, 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 then, and then the Metal Gear Solid stay, jingle was stay, kicking. Dun dun dun. Oh, what's dun dun dun? dun, dun. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. God damn. Oh, the music. I really want to play this game again. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so to wrap up Metal Gear Solid, can you give me your your Best Solid Snake impression from David Hayer. I'm D. What's a Russian gunship doing here? Oh. Merrill! Merrill! The DARPA chief. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> the DARPA Ar chief, Kenneth yeah, 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 the arms tech president, <laughs> Kenneth <Ken> Baker. <laughs> Liquid. <laughs> Merrill! Liquid. Oh, we could do this for hours. What's a Russian you. gunship doing here? <laughs> PlayStation was also great for platformers. It was. It was indeed. So how and it was the last great generation of platformers, yeah. I think. Get you know, to the Gecko, Croc, the... Legend of the Gobbos. What? I don't even Croc. I don't remember that at all. Croc. Don't say it again. Don't Croc. say it again. Legend Croc. of the Gobbos. Croc. How, how easy was. was it to play Crash Bandicoot in 1997 compared to how e how hard it is to play Crash Bandicoot in I think it was hard then and it's hard now. You know? uh, the uh, my favorite level because it was hard but it was cuz that that's the thing is like a game could be hard and still be hugely enjoyable. I think you're in some kind of like Inca pyramid and you're you're completely in the dark. And there's just like one source of light. You're, you're basically playing in the dark. This small source of light. It's like, okay, I'm gonna jump over there. Oh no, I've just fallen into the pit. Yeah, it, it was so frustrating. Though I really did enjoy. Um, I love the levels in the Wrath of Cortex and in in Warped, where you're on. Either, I think it's either the small polar bear and the tiger. Yes. Um, playing as Crash's sister. Yeah, Coco. Coco. Coco the Bandicoot. Yeah. And they were kind of the first games as well. That and Spyro, I think, where they they toyed with the idea of you can't finish this level yet. Oh, we're Spyro. But yeah. if you come back, yeah, when you've got these skills later on, you can do. Yeah. And I quite like that. That I was like that about Crash. Well, I, I didn't really get too into Spyro myself. I see you guys were into Crash. I was in Spyro. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about survival horror. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we were all almost a Jill sandwich. We were uh, almost all a Jill thankfully, sandwich. we're also the master of lockpicking, so, um, you know, yeah, there's that second. That is very out. true. Silent Hill and Resident Evil, uh, on the PlayStation specifically, uh, were just groundbreaking. Completely, yeah. completely groundbreaking. Because survival horror wasn't really, like, a thing at that point. It was, like, just point-and-click stuff. So when Resident Evil came along, or Biohazard, as it's known in Japan, yeah. um, that Biohazard is a much... Resident Evil sounds like the Japanese title. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, that, that sounds like a bad that's translation. Actually, that's actually very true. Mm. Resident Evil 2 was the one for me, though. Yeah, Res 2, yes. I, I, as I mentioned earlier, that was the one. Silent yeah. Hill 1, I, I remember looking back at it at the time, uh, looking at it at the time and thinking, it just doesn't look very good. I thought it was remarkably scary, though. Y you, know, you know what, you know I just I shiver went down my spine. Just that... 
One of the things, uh, one of the things I found scary in Silent Hill, I think it's a, it's also present in number two, is uh, when there was a a creature or something nearby, your radio would start going off. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was just the fog and the fact that you. I loved the open worldness of Silent Hill, which is what Resident Evil didn't have. It had obviously your pre-rendered backgrounds, like we talked with Final Fantasy. Mm. They were in Resident Evil, and you had to kind of go through your corridor, solve the puzzles to progress. But in Silent Hill. You had the whole town, and like there were certain yeah, sections yeah. blocked off and stuff. But I love that, and the fog was everywhere, and the fact that you know you had to, you had to leave you know the diner that you were in to go to the library or whatever, yeah. and you had to go outside. That was quite mm. threatening. Yeah. Well, it was the fog that was the big thing as well. It, it's like a masterclass of design using your limitations as a positive. You know, yeah. the, the fog only exists because they couldn't go any further with the draw distance yeah, yeah. on it. So they just thought, right, we'll just make the town really yeah, foggy. Yeah, exactly. And that Using became what a, they had. That became it. a trademark of the entire game. It's genius. Yeah. It worked. And even now, I mean, the modern ones, which can afford to draw out a bit further, they keep the, the, the fog just because. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm. And it's it's the scariest game series I've ever played. Yeah, you know? 100%. I'm trying to think of like moments within Resident Evil 2 that are scary. I think, the, I think the scariest things within Resident Evil were always just the bits where nothing was happening. Yeah. So, like, we were talking, I think... Me and you were speaking about Resident Evil Two when you were in the police precinct. The the theme music. Mm. Do you do you vividly remember that? Mm. Not vividly. It's like an echoey kind of chimey yeah. uh, track, and you you walk around. You can hear your footsteps echoing throughout the police station, and it's almost just like so sinister that the the city's gone. No one's there, and it, that always sticks with me. Yeah, of course. I mean, like we're not done discussing it, of course. But the 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 final line. Resident Evil 2 is one of the most iconic uh, of all video gaming, which is, hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Why? Yeah, I know. It's like, that's like no, the, no go the government. Yeah. <laughs> go to the FBI. <laughs> Looking back at it now as, a, as an adult, I think Resident Evil scares were a bit cheap, weren't they? They were jump scares. Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah, the, the, dogs and crows flying through the windows. The dog corridor stuff. in the first game where you're running through and like the dogs just jump. The, yeah, the tank controls are yeah. something I always found were really hard to get to grips, grips with, but once you kind of progress through the game, there was an art to it and you would master those controls. Yeah, but like sometimes like, because the, the, they are so counterintuitive, like going up against, the, is it the hunters in the first one? Yeah. Like those reptilian ones? Because they move fast. You've really got to okay, whirl around, Raise your sidearm, fire. Yeah. I think it got, uh, as it went along, like by the time it got to uh, Nemesis, um, they had like reevaluated some of the controls so that it was a bit easier to kind of pop up. And you right. could, a little you could, bit, you yeah. Could quickly you quickly spin your character It was around, like backwards yeah. in a circle or something, yeah. yeah. But you were never just fighting the enemies in this, were you? You were fighting the camera yes, all the time the, as well. The you know? true enemy of Resident <laughs> Evil. <Yeah. laughs> oh, brilliant. I, I know there's something to kill, but I can't see it. Yeah. I can't even see myself anymore. Know, it was the worst. Did you like the nemesis character when that was the way that was added in to number three i thought that was quite a threatening thing when you'd just be walking along a corridor and, no, the and then you hear the itself. door slam and he's just running straight after you. see for me i i did think it was scary but it put me off playing the game just because it's this ever pervasive problem that you can't really get rid of i quite like that though you're being hunted yeah. aren't you? i did like the idea of keeping half your in inventory for when the nemesis turned up yeah so you'd have like five rockets with you just because you're like i haven't seen him in half an hour no, now no, this is going to go down yeah, yeah. Let's look at some of the games on the platform. Tony Hawk's. Hated yeah, it. Yeah. You hated Tony Hawk? <laughs> wow. I'm... Final Fantasy and Tony Hawk. Did you have any friends? He'd be playing Tony Hawk's. So I'd just be sat like, it's, it's just a guy in a bit of water. Uh, getting it's... those combos right, that was. The... Uh, it's, it's like FIFA. It's not a spectator game, that at all. Um, no. it's, but when I you're can't playing even it... play it now. See, I, I'm playing it was like, I'm just on a bit of wood. Oh, it's collectible. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's that aspect of game that's always got See, me where you're like, you've got a list, a checklist of stuff you have to do. And some of the stuff was hidden, I seem to recall, so you had to find it, like, go onto a roof or something. The soundtrack of Tony Hawk's Pro yeah, that was 2, it. though, is That defined my life. Did it have did, the girl all the bad guys want? No, a bit too early for that. <laughs> or was it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. I think it definitely had a OPM. Uh, We're talking, like, no effects. Heaven is a half. Heaven is a half. Was this the first time you played Tomb Raider? Tomb Raider 2 on the PC, actually. Oh, was it the PC? Yeah. I played Tomb Raider on... Person. Yeah, I was strictly a PlayStation boy with my um, Tomb Raider games. Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, how great was it running around uh, the mansion and locking the butler? Yeah, yeah. it that, was difficult as yeah. well because tank controls again, yeah. you know, but <laughs> just satisfaction where you got it and it was like... Tomb Raider level, I always remember, is Tomb Raider 2 and it's called 40 Fathoms and it's where you have to dive down the water and 
uh, get past a couple of great white sharks yeah. to get into a shipwreck at the bottom. Your favourite? That was my least favourite Tomb Raider level ever. It just always sticks with me, that level, because it was so scary, you know? Yeah. We'll wrap up this one with some honourable mentions. Mm. Okay. Rayman. Oh, mm. yeah, great fun. Never really got into it. Rugrats, the game. Oh, is that the 3D one where you're crawling search around? The for Reptile one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, only, I only have the demo, but yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh, there was demo. Yeah, demo disc. Speaking of Damn. honorable mentions, demo discs. Damn. Yeah. Oh, they were so great. I can't believe we got this far about talking about the, the demo disc you got with PSM magazine. Yeah. Medieval. Well, coming Medieval. Back. They're bringing it, yeah, bringing that back, aren't mm -hmm. they? Damn, I don't think that was as loved as the other stuff that brought back Medieval. I think that was quite niche. Yeah. It did have to be good. It was like Abe's Odyssey. You know, they brought that back and it was, uh, it did, okay. Yeah, it, it was you know. okay. Hello, come with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the whole game. Yeah. yeah. Dino Crisis. Yeah. God damn it, I love them games. Dino Crisis 2 in particular, yeah. where you, at the end, you find out that the old hologram dude is you. So I, I thought it was weird how such a successful series and they were so markedly different, the first two games. The first one was Resident Evil, the second one was an action game. We yeah. never got a Dino Crisis 3, to my knowledge, did we? Yeah, no. we did. Did we? Did we? Look at that after. Oh, <laughs> Christ, that must Check have that. sucked. Yeah, it happened. But I'm surprised it hasn't come back, because I think that's got more of a following than, say, Medieval, for example. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of thing that... I think there's a niche in the market for dinosaur shooters. Yeah, you know? the, the, the second one was much... I mean, I enjoyed the first one. The second one was much more, more my because yeah, yeah. the, the, the first one was spooky. The second one, the best word I can use to describe it is bitching. Yeah, it was. It was just a bitching game. Yeah. Theme Hospital. God damn, I love that game so much. Yeah, I loved like the, the illnesses they had in that, like the big head. Um, Soul Reaver. Yeah. He played it a bit. God, Soul Reaver. That, that was, because that, that was proper like, dark, gothic yeah, kind yeah. of thing, wasn't it? Well, like at, at the time I thought, oh, this is so cool and edgy. And like, you look at stuff like that, and it, that kind of character design is yeah, like, yeah, you, like yeah, all right, hot topic. Command and Conquer, Red Alert. Oh, yeah. God damn. Again, that was a PC game for me, but Red yeah. Alert and Red Alert 2 in particular. Yeah. See, that's never my cup of tea. I mean, like, Age of Empires on the PC, that's my cup of tea, but not uh, kind of. Yeah. Like, Parappa the Rapper. Ha. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Siphon Filter, we've already spoken about. <laughs> Do you remember there was a game called Apocalypse with Bruce Willis? Yeah. yeah. A, a, a top down shooter, and you, you, you press left, and he'd shoot left, and you press it left. It was really weird, right, wasn't yeah. that? Yeah. And uh, lastly, do you remember a game called Fighting Force? Oh, the name oh. It was like a multiplayer game. No. It was kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like Streets of Rage, but in 3D. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, that that was do. quite fun. Yeah, that was a good game. Can yeah. I throw one in? Yeah. Point Blank. Yeah, that was cool. That? And time, the time Crisis, and yeah. you had your Light Gun, yeah. I'm surprised Light Guns have died. Yeah, I can't Are we you? haven't... A no, but Point Blank was... Fun and it was for everyone as well. That was something you mum could pick. I would love to play. Uh, I would like play that again. Without or House, the of, the, House of the Dead. Spyro. We've mentioned Spyro. Oh, we're talking. We've talked yeah. about. Uh, we didn't really touch on it too much, though. Actually, I love Spyro. Yeah. Again, it's a collecting thing in me. You know, yeah. I like to get Going all the gems. I like to get all the dragons. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's just a fun game. That. Spyro was was great, and oh. yeah, we'll be back uh, very soon. What do you think is the the impact then of the PlayStation and it's it's. This, this console in particular, and its legacy. It's hard to say, isn't it, really? It started the process of taking it away from being the games for geeks angle, I think. Mm. It made yeah. it more socially acceptable. Yeah, would you question. say that, that this was the beginning of the, the home entertainment system? Yeah. Thing, and like, as you say, the CD yeah. player. So yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one for every living room, kind of. I mean, it was, in, in terms of the industry, it's interesting because um, it was a lot better for devs because uh, discs were easier to mm. develop for than the cameras. Yeah, cheaper yeah. as well. Yeah. And much and, cheaper. Well, yeah, and this is where they were able to outprice their competitors as well. They were able to sell the games for mm. cheaper. Um, so it completely changed the industry there. I find its its history in particular is probably the most interesting console ever mm. in how it came to be. I think that whole deal with Nintendo completely changed the landscape of gaming as we know it today. It wouldn't be in the same position as it is right now if that didn't happen mm. you know the playstation's never gonna go away either is it no it's a brand it's it kind is of, it's a household name now. yeah it's it? as big a name now as sony i think you're fine maybe bigger it got me properly into gaming you know i, I think if it wasn't for the ps1 if it wasn't for as we say final fantasy 7 metal gear solar i probably wouldn't be as into it today as i am yeah because uh, that as i think one of you two said that showed what it can be yeah you know, it's not just some throwaway schlocky 20 minute mess around not at all it's better than TV, and yeah. I stand by that to this day. 
Should we do a little pop quiz to end things? Oh, on? Christ. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> so this is the, um, the top eight biggest selling PlayStation 1 games. What do you reckon the biggest selling game is of all time? Final Fantasy VII. No. Metal Gear. No. Resident <laughs> Evil 3. No. Resident Evil isn't even in the top eight. Wow. Okay. Ah. The top selling game. Yeah. Ah. Oh, you didn't could tell this, us this was coming. Could yeah, this be one of those ones wherein it's like, ah, well, that sold a heck of a lot in Japan, you know what I mean? Um, is it something we've mentioned? Yes. Crash. Spyro. No, Crash is in the top eight, though. Tony Hawk. He appears twice. No, Tony Hawk's not. No, not Tony Damn, Hawk. What, um, have we, what have we taught to it? Is it a Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy is not number one, but it appears in the top eight three times. Well, that Woo! makes sense, yeah. Tomb Raider. No, it doesn't appear in the top eight. Gosh. God, that's surprising in itself. Well, any of them. None of them. Gran Turismo? Yes. There we go, right. Gran Turismo is number one. Yeah, how many many copies do you think it sold? God only knows. (laughs) 30 million. No, no, we're not, not that I can reach. It was uh, 15 million copies sold it's for Grand Turismo. So it's the number one game sold. You want me to run down the rest of them? Yeah, go for it. It's probably best than us guessing. Yeah, yeah so uh, number one, Grand Turismo, 15 million. Number two, Final Fantasy VII, 9.72. Grand Turismo 2, 9.97 million <laughs> copies. Final Fantasy VIII, 7.86. <laughs> so it goes four is two GT, series. Yeah, Final yeah. Fantasy, GT, Final Fantasy. Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped is at number five, 7.13 million. Wow. Number six is Crash Bandicoot, 6.82. Mm-hmm. Number seven, Metal Gear Solid, 6.3 okay. million. And number eight is Final Fantasy IX at 5.3 okay. million. <laughs> Interesting to see all the, the Final Fantasy trilogies all in there. I'm not, not at all. They were massive. Yeah. They were temple releases, weren't they? And they were exclusives yeah. as well. They were exclusives, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they weren't anywhere else. Mm. Man, that was fun. Okay, yeah. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our debut episode of Retrograde. Uh, if you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. We will be back at the same time tomorrow with more of this. That's a lie. <laughs> okay, well, we will see you down the line. And thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.